Hey everyone, welcome to Serial Killer. Welcome! Yay! Yay! The podcast where we talk about true crime and we pair it with cereal. Yeah! Because that's what we like to do. Because <laughs> we love breakfast cereal and also murder. I like breakfast in general. I love breakfast. Yeah. I once had a boss who complained about how like our the millennial, like our generation, yeah. Are super into breakfast, and he's like, I hate it. Breakfast is a useless meal. And I was like, You're incorrect, and I would eat breakfast food for every single meal if it was socially acceptable. Right? Breakfast for dinner is like one of the oh, best amazing. things. And like, I, it's weird because I have like a whole bunch of allergies too. So, like, yeah. breakfast is not the easiest for me because I'm allergic to pork. I know, weird. Um, and so that's like several fruits. <laughs> and several fruits. Um, and peanuts. And peanuts, yeah. <laughs> I'm allergic to a lot of things. Um, so then it's like it's like more of a difficult thing. Yeah. But I love breakfast. And when people are like, people are like, I'm not a breakfast person. I'm like, how? But th- that in general, I'm like, how are you not a food person? I just like yes. food. I like food, and I think breakfast foods have yeah. some of the most interesting things yeah. in them. And hobbits have it right. When they're like, <laughs> Yeah, first breakfast, second, second breakfast, breakfast. 11Zs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this. It's perfect. Um, well, today we're, um, it, today is my birthday. Yeah. Now, because we're both Scorpios. <clears throat> so this is going to happen <laughs> every year. Every year, just like bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Two birthday murders Two birthday in a row. <laughs> we had like a little break. I know, I was going to say, there's, there's, a little, there's like a week in between. Is there? Actually, well, because you're only 12 days apart from me. Right, but I think yours just... Yeah, mine, I, yeah, mine came out, what is today, today in real life. Right. <laughs> and then mine's coming out, I think, next week, actually. Yeah, so no, yeah, because it's the week of your so birthday. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no. There's no break. There might be once. It depends on how our birthdays fall. Yeah, it, it depends <laughs> on how our birthdays fall. But, um, so, happy uh, yeah, belated. Thank you, and happy early birthday. Thank you. Um, and I was born on November 14th, um, which means I was conceived on Valentine's Day. You're <laughs> disgusting. I know you're listening, Mom. No, it's fine. I was, a, I was early, so I was definitely a Valentine's baby, too. <laughs> See, our parents had a great Valentine's Day. Um, and there's a pretty notorious murder on yeah. my birthday. It's, we actually realized that there are like two or three very famous murders that happened on this day. Yeah, and I think there's a couple of, I, I can look it up, but I think there's a serial killer that's yeah. actually born on my on birthday. birthday. Um, so I guess don't have sex on Valentine's Day, or do? Or do but just I like, be warned? I don't know. Be warned. I mean, no well, matter what, you're gonna get a Scorpio, so that's a whole... Warning in but there's and of not itself. a ton. Like there's a lot. There's a few Scorpios that are serial killers, but the most, the most, they're not, yeah, they're not the highest well, sign to have to have serial killers. What is? Has so someone done like, that? There, there is lots of, of articles, course. and um, I posted one the other day, and it was it was like highly yes. Pisces. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, yeah. So like, I mean, there's a million articles, but usually you see a Pisces on there a lot. Yeah. Um, but Scorpios don't always make the list, depending on who's making the list, mm-hmm. which, but then uh, people are quick to point out, yes, and Manson was a, a Scorpio, Yeah, and those people are Scorpios. So, yes, uh, there are Scorpios, there's any sign that's a serial killer. It's true. But it's just, like, they automatically assume Scorpios, that Scorpios are, are serial, yeah. But even, like, my birthday murders, they're not Scorpios, necessarily. Yeah. It's just murdering in fall. <laughs> Right? The timing the timing out that way. way. So the murder that we're talking about is uh, infamous by being called In Cold Blood yeah. by Truman Capote, Capote. Um, and, but is actually the Clutter Family Murders. Um, and I feel Ooh. like there was a lot, well, we can get into it, but like Truman Capote's In Cold Blood sensationalized yeah. this murder. And oh, we'll, yeah. We'll get into more of that in a little bit, but... Um, the reason I chose the cereal, it was a little difficult <laughs> because we're doing two in a row that, that are, are the like, same state. Yeah, that are in the same state. We, we wanted to do something kind of like very much like a state, but then yeah. we're like, oh, we have to pick one. So um, I actually <laughs> looked up what the two That's convicted right. murderers, their last meal last was. Last meal was, and was inspired. <laughs> I know sometimes we use words and I'm like, I don't want to associate this like positive thing with a bunch of murder, but that's what's happening. I was in 
inspired <laughs> to pick uh, a <laughs> cereal based on the fact that both of the convicted murderers' last meals were shrimp, french fries, garlic bread, ice cream, and strawberries with whipped cream. Now, I think you're you're scared, right? You're thinking That's we're going to have shrimp cereal. <laughs> are you? Are you scared? <laughs> You've seen the cereal, so you know what's happening. It's just such a weird last meal. I feel like it's just kind of normal. It's just like a normal Midwestern, mm -hmm. like... Was it normal shrimp? Was it like cocktail shrimp? You know, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Because it would, I would get it if it was like, oh, I want some fried shrimp and some french fries Let's and then like all this sweet shrimp. stuff. All right. I'd want some like coconut shrimp. Yeah. Like the Trader Joe's like pinko. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me, for my last meal, could I get a Trader Joe's four cheese pizza? And <laughs> you just go to Trader Joe's because this body is by Trader Joe's <laughs> or Del Taco. And that's the way we go. There's only two speeds here. But I picked, um, there's quite a few strawberry cereals. There are, there, there are, are. Um, and I feel like strawberries actually are in a lot of last meals, so I'll leave yeah. some of them because <laughs> for later, for later. Uh, but we're gonna do Special K red berries, mm. uh, and I picked it because red berries. Um, so it's, they actually have like big strawberries in it. Yeah, it says real strawberries right on the box. Oh, it smells. How does it smell? Does it smell like strawberries? It smells, do you remember the strawberry? Ooh, interesting. Um, it was like a strawberry um, hot cereal. Maybe like mm. maybe it has like a babies or like toddlers. That's what it smells like to me. It smells like some kind of toddler yeah, yeah. cereal I had. It smells like the like puffed candy snacks that uh, babies, not candy, but like Oh, yeah, like snacks that babies eat. It smells, like, it smells, it smells like, like, baby. like a baby. <laughs> it smells like a baby. <laughs> There's something about that, like, freeze-dried texture that definitely smells yeah. specific. Yeah, let's see. Okay, like, this is, like, a huge it's strawberry, It's a full-on freeze-dried strawberry. Like, these are just freeze-dried strawberries. I'm not hating that. Um, uh, I'm about it. Let's see. Let's How's see. it taste? Mm. The strawberry tastes like a freeze-dried strawberry. Away from the mic. I know. <laughs> and the flakes are really good. Yeah. That's good cereal. That's a good that's cereal. solid cereal. I, I was actually kind of scared because I was like, it's like a diet cereal. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's like what I eat on Weight Watchers. I was going to say before <laughs> we started, Anastasia was like, do we need sugar? How is this going to taste? <laughs> well, I didn't know if it was like bran flakes. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. You know, you get like a little sprinkle of sugar. No. Or you get your monk fruit if you're fancy. You know. Monk fruit. I like a monk fruit. <laughs> I could not even tell you what is a monk fruit. It's a monk fruit. Oh, wonderful. It's a fruit from monks. They grow them on the Himalayan... <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't with the back of this box because the back of this box says folic acid to support female health. <laughs> That's to support our and vaginas. I just, I just want to say that folic acid is important for everyone. <laughs> nope, just for vaginas. You're welcome. <laughs> what helps your nail is and skin and hair get no, strong and healthy. Just your vagina. Just your vagina. It also helps. Not even your reproductive your uterus. Nope, nope, not your Just reproductive. your vagina. Just your vagina. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> you know, that folic acid for well, my vagina. Well, it's going to help this vagina of mine. Let's pour some and try it. <laughs> As antioxidants, women need. Wow, this box is very much just like. Are you a woman? Eat this cereal. Are you a man? This is not for you. Well, I mean, what man? If you're, I mean, what man is gonna eat special? Listen, today? I, I'm not judging you if you do. Yeah, live is, your life. So far, dry. It tastes delicious. Oh, good. So I'm gonna pour some in for. Um, what am I doing? Am I doing it weird? It feels weird. No, that's how cereal is poured. Okay. I think it's I think it's hard to pour because it has those giant strawberries, so it's not like a Lucky Charms or something where oh. all the stuff is the same size. Yeah, I don't know if I got anything. I don't know what happened. There's some okay. strawberries. Mm. All right. There's oh. maybe something oh, in there. All right. All right. So now I'm gonna put some milk. Um, why am I so special today? It's because I had a good cry, you guys. That's <laughs> what it's all about. Listen, birthday season <laughs> cry. Birthday season means we cry. It's Scorpions. true. <laughs> it means there are a lot of feelings, and half of them are I hate everything, even yeah. though it makes no sense. Um, 
And Scorpios cry all the time. <laughs> um, oh, we got new bowls, you guys. Yeah, Anastasia and her sister made that. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if you can see it on there. They're dope. Kind of. They say bit. serial killer. They say serial killer and blood. I mean, red paint. <laughs> <laughs> Not blood at all. If you could only see my face. All right. Um, milk food. I know, I'm trying to see if the freeze-dried strawberries will, like, become normal strawberries. If it's, like, when you try to add water to astronaut ice cream and you just get, like, this sad pile. What if it just plumped up completely like a strawberry? <laughs> would you freak the fuck out? Because I would I would be so excited. I would be like, we have to call Special K. They've invented some technology. We can have fruit forever. <laughs> My first thought is, like... <laughs> like, it's like a space thing. My first thought is, like... The, like in the movie Downsizing, where they're like, we just make everyone small so that all the food lasts longer. <laughs> is that what that movie's about? Okay, that movie is very weird, and it's this is a total tangent, <laughs> and I haven't seen it. I just read the Wikipedia description, but that is half of what that movie's about, and it has a horrible ending. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's not a feel as in a feel good as people, like as the marketing team wanted you to believe. Well, I didn't think it was going to make me feel good, so I didn't watch it. This cereal rocks, you guys. I think this might be one of my new favorite cereals. This is great. Like, I would eat this normally. I pass by this cereal all the time and, like, with judgmental eyes. <laughs> I do. Like, 100%. And even when I got it, I was like, this is gonna be gross. And it's hella good. It was way better than that weird bunny, bunny cereal, cereal last week. <laughs> I'm gonna say and knife up, up dry mm -hmm. and knife up uh, with milk. Delicious. And doesn't need any, like, sweetener no. or anything. And it has folic acid for my womanly needs. For my beignet box, which is the name I call my little <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Perfect for my bento box. <laughs> Her bento box is satisfied. <laughs> Knife up. <laughs> which now sounds sexual, too. <laughs> um, so murder. Okay, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, to go along with the, what was it, pound of strawberries that they got? That's true. Well, I don't know if it was a pound. It was just like a... A pile. A pile. Um, Because there was some... Was it, there's like one last meal that I remember, and it's like fried chicken and two pounds of strawberries. Oh, it's like John Wayne Gacy. It's John Wayne Gacy. Yeah. He had like two buckets yeah. of chicken, which he was a... The KFC, um, yeah, because he owned a KFC. He owned um, like a, a couple, bunch, yeah. yeah. Um, which, you yeah, know, and then scary. It was specifically two pounds of strawberries, which is why I remember it, because that was really weird. Yeah, it is quite strange. Um, so, on November 14th, my birthday. <laughs> That's gonna be like, yay, but then I realized what was about to happen, so I stopped. In 1959, I was not born. <laughs> yeah. Although, my mom and Anastasia share a birthday, but she was born in the 50s, so she was around. See, this was her sixth so birthday. <laughs> That was her sixth birthday. It was my not none, yet, not none yet, birthday. None, none your business birthday. <laughs> um, in Holcomb, I'm gonna say Holcomb. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. I don't. Holcomb. I've, I've Holcomb? driven through Kansas, and that is the extent of my Kansas knowledge. It's like Holcomb. Yeah, I don't know. You're you're in for a treat. When okay. I try to say Holcomb, words later. Holcomb, Kansas. Um, four members of the four members of the <laughs> Herbert Clutter family. Is it the members of the Herbert Clutter family because the guy's name is Herbert? I think so, yeah. The head of the family? Yeah. Yeah, that's what they would do. Because if there were, like, multiple Clutter families, like, if he had a brother who lived in town, then it'd be like, oh, no, we're talking about, like, Donovan Herbert's family. Or Clutter. You know what I mean. It's so weird. Yeah, it's a thing that used to happen when it was, like, the head of the household was... A thing. All right. Well, the Herbert Clutter family. Um, four of the members of the uh, family were bound and uh, shot to death. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't the whole family because one of the daughters yeah. was actually out. She was at a sleepover or something. Right. Um. Uh. But they were rich or like they not were rich, not rich, rich be prosperous. Yeah. They had. They owned their house. They had a farm? I would they say, have a like, bunch of land. Upper middle class farmers? Yeah. Um, in Kansas. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not like they had, you know, six pounds of gold laying around or anything. But and they're still they working. Weren't, yeah, they weren't, like, destitute, making their own shoes, like. 
they yeah. could afford to go and buy stuff and and not rely only on what they could make. Right. So and yeah, there was class. other family members that weren't living in the house. There was two older daughters that had already moved away. Mm-hmm. And I, I think maybe got married. Or yeah, they were maybe went they to were college. Off, yeah, they were off living their life, and they had two younger children, um, Nancy, sixteen, and Ken Kenyon. Yeah, I never knew how to say that. Fifteen. <laughs> we're both in high school. It's one of those names you only read. Right? And then Bonnie, um, the wife, mm-hmm. um, it seems like what now would have been called, like, severe postpartum. Yeah. But um, back then was, like, what, hysteria? Yeah, she had, yeah. like, clinical depression and physical ailments after the birth of her children, but I guess that didn't stop her from having all these kids. Please well, just, like, get off her. I'm gonna go just out on a her. limb and say that they were Christian. <laughs> right, but just get off her. Wait, stop. Leave her alone. <laughs> Leave her alone. <laughs> or pull out or something. <laughs> Do something. Maybe it was one of those things where, like, she was only happy when she was pregnant. I'm completely making this up. Let's but just speculate. Let's just speculate wildly that she was very happy when she was pregnant, and that's why she kept having kids. And, and then it was, just, like, the after that was like, oh, this is awful. I just don't know that we had that many choices back then. That's like, also true. My, my, um, my grandmother, my mom's mother, she was pregnant for 13 straight years. Yeah. Like, 13 my, straight Yeah, my grandmother was years. pregnant for all of the 50s. That is insanity yeah, to me. Yeah, I don't, it, like, pains me right? to imagine that. Um, so, uh, the crime was committed by two ex-convicts recently paroled, and I, I believe they met in prison. Yeah. At the, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they did they meet met in prison. in Kansas State Penitentiary. Uh, their names are Richard Eugene Dick Hickok. Right. Dick Hickok. I Dick love that name. Dick Hickok. Um, and Perry Edward Smith, um, and they went in there, um, in the morning, like, early morning, and they were, um... They were there for a while, They were there for a while, and they robbed and murdered her, Bonnie, Nancy, and Kenyon. Um, Kenyon? Kenyon. Kenyon. (laughs) Just say it differently every single time. Kenyon. 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 Um... So I guess they got the idea from a former inmate that they knew saying that that this family was so rich and they had this like big fat safe. Yeah, full of whatever. Whatever. Just big fucking safe. You know how farmers are like love their safes. Rolling in the fucking dough. I don't. Like I mean, these are like hard working people that like, like are prosperous but like have to work. And like like putting things in perspective, like I know people who have safes today Mm -hmm. like and some of them are like you know friends parents who like actually make a whole lot of money and it makes sense that they have like important shit to put in a safe and then some of them are like you know my friend who got robbed and is like well I just put all my backup hard drives in there because just in case yeah so it's like important papers exactly important documents sentimental things stuff you're worried about burning if there's ever a fire or something although Hmm. Oh, oh. So, little tidbit. Um, when when the Santa Rosa fire happened, my sister lost her home. It was just horrible and tragic. And but like people, they were like some very wealthy retired people mm-hmm. that had all these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were supposed to be fireproof oh, they because weren't? of the heat of it. Oh, the fire shit. didn't like, penetrate the. And that's I don't know if I should have used the word penetrate. <laughs> no, that's no, no, right. No. <laughs> all right. Didn't get inside, but. So much of the heat of the thing actually caused like their valuables to melt together. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, because the the, yeah. the safe or whatever is gonna heat up to crazy right. degrees. So technically, it's fire safe. <laughs> Got it. But up not to melt. you know, like how they say melt in your mouth, not in your hand. <laughs> this is this not will that. melt in your safe. <laughs> this is not. This is not that. This is the opposite. Um. So their whole motivation was to go to this family's house. Raid the safe. Raid the safe, and then go t- to have a new life in Mexico. Because that's what it, everybody in the 50s thought they could just go to Mexico and that. have a great new life. I love that it was Mexico. Probably because the American dollar traveled crazy far back then. Yeah. I mean, still But also, of. like, yeah. I don't, I feel like if I was going to run from the law, if I was going to be like, let me commit this violent crime and then go somewhere, I would not pick Mexico. 
I mean, I would always pick Europe, but I also wouldn't commit like, a horrible violent crime. Yeah, I would just be like, I decided mm. now I'm moving to Europe. Mexico makes sense, because you, at that time, you probably didn't need a passport to get in. You probably could just walk through if you were American. And now, in America, you're going to need a passport to go to any state. I know. So there you go. Fucking, or get, bring in your fucking original birth certificate, three pa old passports, and your driver's license to get the real ID. Jeez. Um, I don't know. It's, I know you have to bring in, uh, like, three forms of ID, and one of them has to be your original birth certificate. Jesus. Right? And I'm like, are you, I'm sorry, it's much easier to get an actual passport than to get this new driver's license, so I'll just keep renewing my passport. Also, that lasts, like, ten years. It does. does. Well, I mean, like it's a decade. I yeah, I got one. I re up sophomore year of college. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm coming up on ten years, but I still got two. I mean, I don't Passports. mind. Passport. So they probably just right. were like, "That's easy. Let me just drive down to Mexico." Drive down to Mexico. So they located the house. They um, they entered the house. Um. Everyone was asleep, um, and so they bound and gagged the family and continued to search for money. Yeah. Um, but didn't really find anything crazy valuable. I mean, you know, just yeah, standard stuff. Um, and so then they were like, "What do we do? Like, yeah, so we went in here to rob this family. This family, yeah, they all don't here. have." Anything we want, anything worth taking. Mm -hmm. They're they've all seen us. Yeah, we tied them all up, so we have to do something. So apparently, they like debated this for like a long, like a long time. Like, what do we do? What do we do? But it's said that Smith, so Perry, yep. um, was kind of like not. I don't. I don't. I like saying unstable, but like. He was rageful. Yeah. He would, like, go into, like, fits and stuff like that. And Didn't have a great handle on his emotions. Right. And so he just went up to Herb and, like, slit his throat. Oh. And then shot him in the head. Um, and, like, so Truman Capote wrote a book called yeah. In Cold Blood that really sensationalized um, the whole murder. Yeah. And it was very close to, like, when it actually happened. It wasn't too far. No, it was the 60s that he released it. And because he interviewed them before interviewed they them. died. Right. So he, and he, like... So he has a lot of quotes from them. Yeah. I remember I read the book and then I watched the Capote movie with um, Philip Seymour Hoffman mm -hmm. as Truman Capote. And in that, they really go into how, like, it was... Maybe because Truman Capote had some romantic feelings toward Perry. Oh. And, like, possibly that was motivating him to keep coming back and doing these, like, very in-depth interviews. Because, like, they would write letters to each other when yeah. they didn't do interviews because he couldn't always, like, be in Kansas. I mean, I'm just going to say, Truman, you could probably have done better. I know it was the 60s and, like... <laughs> Being gay was not okay and everything, but also really, yes, really. No. Um, I'm gonna say, but yeah, no. so that's something that like is and speculated Perry's like, about. And Perry's like the bad. He's the, one. Yeah, he's the one who like in well, all. I mean, they're both bad. But in all accounts, it seems like Perry tried. Like it's it's the like Columbine setup where it's like one of them tried to more coerce the other one into all this shit, and then it was really yeah. a tag team effort. Although I think they, at one point, kept flipping on each other. But, yeah. um, Smith, or Perry, um, like, talked about the, like, when he slit the guy's throat, and he said, um, I didn't want to harm the man. I thought he was a ni very nice gentleman. Soft-spoken. I thought so right up to the moment I cut his throat. All right. Like, What? <laughs> some cold shit. That's some, that is some in cold blood. Like, that, that is, is some in cold blood shit. That is some, like, he was so nice and kind. Too bad I had to kill him. <laughs> like, I guess. Like, I mean, what? It, it doesn't even, I mean, like, it sounds like panic. Yeah. But also, they, like, were there for a bit. They were there for, like, at least an hour. Like, it's an yeah. amount of time that, like, 
it's like the was it John Bonet where it's like and then they made a sandwich and then yeah, like and then, they and then they took a shower and it's like what the fuck why are you doing in this house <laughs> yeah on their stationery well we need to talk about that, <laughs> that uh, we will oh, talk to oh. about that later um and then um I guess we don't know particularly who did yeah. what but um Kenya Nancy and Mrs Clutter were um each killed by a single shotgun blast to the head. Um, and then I all they really got was a small portable radio, a pair of binoculars, and about like 50 bucks in cash. Which is like 100 something. Like, yeah. Like it's almost nothing. So they killed today. four people for, for like, like under $100. Yeah, that radio could not have cost more than like 20 bucks. No. And like, unless, I mean... But it's also like are one of those things that it could be crazy they could expensive. Be crazy and I don't understand. <laughs> and why. I don't get it, but okay. So my dad would always like oh, buy like binoculars. He always wanted binoculars for like Christmas or something. And I'm you like, were like, why are these so much money? <laughs> and then he'd be really mad when I broke them. These are just mirrors. What are you doing? And I'm like, I just broke oh, it God. again. I think I. I accidentally dropped a pair off of a Grand Canyon once. Ooh. Just a part of it. <laughs> the other half was so fine. mad. It was just like the eyepiece of one's eye. There's a still one other eye. <laughs> yeah, you just use it like a telescope at that point. Duh. Apparently that's a big deal. Apparently that's too much, oh, man. Good. Um. <laughs> so like... Yeah, this could not have been, because it's, it's also, like, if that was the shit, they were like, oh, well, we'll take the expensive stuff that we can carry, because I'm sure they couldn't, like, carry a TV if the if the clutters had a TV. I'm not even sure they would have had a TV. Late 50s? Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. I mean, my mom used to go to somebody else's house to watch TV. TV. I don't remember my mom. My mom, they always, they had, like, seven kids, so they had a TV, but it was one of those, like... Also, yeah, like, do you get them? Like, who's exactly. in charge of this TV right now? What right. are the three and a half channels we get? Are we watching? <laughs> oh, right. and then the test pattern's up? Well, it turns off now. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah like, they, like, they couldn't have carried a TV. Because, like, I think about people robbing today. Like, my friend's apartment got broken into, and they Ugh. took, like, laptops and gaming systems and, like, stuff that's small but expensive. But back in the 50s, there was not a lot of stuff that was, like, small and expensive. I mean, just, like, jewelry and stuff like that. But yeah. then we're also talking about people that, I mean, even the stuff that's, like, more important is, like, family heirlooms. And they're yeah. probably just not, like, I mean, it's not, like, Rockefeller level. Yeah, you know? exactly. And it's, but yeah, I'm sure, like, their family heirlooms could have been, here's this nice silver chain. Yeah. And we just really love it and treasure it. It's been in our family, but it's worth, like, $8. So they were robbed. So yeah, they, they got sort of robbed. <laughs> they got killed for killed less than a hundred dollars. Um so later sad. um like later Perry takes the blame for most of it. Yeah. Um, which he says he says he takes the blame for it and he um he says he confesses because he doesn't want Dick's mom to feel That's bad. Right. Um, cause he, cause she's like a really good person. Yeah. And she, um, yeah. Oh, this, this is the part of the story where it's, it's like, weird. it's all the, like the stuff from the trial and up until they die is really weird. Yeah. Like he, so he says he, he killed, he said he killed the two women and the father. Yeah. And then, um, Dick, we'll just call him Dick. Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> Don't want to say Hickok. Well, I'm just like I'm like I'm like I'm going through all their names back and forth. I know everybody. So Perry, Perry said he, yeah. he Perry said he killed the dad and the two women, so the daughter the, and, and the, the mom. mom. Yeah, and then uh, Dick said he that Perry killed all four. Okay, so he said he Got was it. just basically he just stood there like they or were, helped tie them up or whatever. Right. Um. So they basically were just like um. Like, he went in there, and they were robbing, and then it just, like, got out of control because he just went crazy um, and killed people, which I think probably, let's face it, is probably somewhere in between. There, yeah, right? yeah. Um, yeah, because it seems like Perry definitely wasn't fully 
present all the time and had some mood situations. Right. Um, but it also, this story changes like three times. Yeah. Uh, so it is, it is somewhere in between all of them. <laughs> so they're caught, um, so they leave. Yeah. They leave after they've committed all four killings. They leave and, um, I guess, um, somebody like tips off their prison warden or something. Cause they like, they like plan it in prison for like months. Like they talk to, there's like a dude who I think is the one that knows Yeah, them. that knows the clutters and knows them. So then them. he tells the warden that this is going yeah. on. Yeah. And, and, um, and like tells them that these two guys are going to do this. Yeah. And then they're found in Las Vegas on December 30th. So, you know, a oh, good month and a half. Yeah. Um, they're, um, on the loose. <laughs> on the lamb. On the lamb. Is that a thing? Right. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's what it's called when you're on the run from the cops. So then they, the they're identified and arrested in Vegas on December 30th. Um, and then they're brought into back to Kansas for questioning, at which point both of them confess after like, being interrogated. That's really the best thing to do at this point for them, because they're gonna, like, I don't know how advanced forensics was back then, but I also don't think they cleaned up after them super well. Probably not. And they had, like, basically laid out their plans to somebody to else. To someone, yeah. Although, someone in prison overheard them, like, plotting all of I this. I feel like it's not the most credible witness, <laughs> but at the same time it's just too much, like... Too much happenstance yeah. to not be like, yeah, these are the guys who did it. Right. Um, both of them, uh, plead to temporary insanity at the trial. Um... But both are declared yeah. legally sane. But yeah, mentally fit. It's really um, interesting how that plea seems to work for women. Like, 90% of the time they try it, and it rarely works for men. You know, I think it's weird. I think pleading insanity um, is, a, is a weird thing. It's a strange, it's a strange concept. Because these people aren't sane. But they're sane. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I feel like that's a weird line, right? <laughs> like clearly, dude, you're something's insane. wrong. Yeah. You're not sane. But could you have not done it? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Should you be held accountable? Yes. Yeah. I mean, like, there's very, like, very rare cases where I feel like it's like you were so not sane yeah, that you that you can never be. Yeah. That. Or that the situation itself was so intense that that it caused some kind of break. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why women, you it works yeah, more with yeah, women yeah, because we're that. being constantly driven crazy. Accurate. You know. By society, society and just, everyone. And that's why there's a whole show called Snapped. Um... <laughs> <laughs> And that's why it's a legitimate excuse for women. <laughs> it's just it's kidding. super. I just remember, kidding. No, 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 no. In law class in high school, my teacher, some kid, I forget what we were talking about, but some kid was like, well, why didn't they just plead insanity? And my teacher was like, do you know what happens when you plead insanity? Like, it, you don't just go home. No, you don't just go, I'm <laughs> sorry. I was crazy. I'll never do it again. Yeah. Bye. No, you have to then be institutionalized. Yeah. What could be your entire life? Yeah. I mean, like, it it's always not always happen that way, which sometimes no. it should. But yeah, it's not a fun time. Um, but the... So they, yeah, they have to plead regular. They can't use insanity. Uh, so they, they're they found sane, and then the the defense goes, no, 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 they need more, they need more testing. Mm -hmm. More counseling or whatever. Uh, and that was denied. Um, they had, like, a couple general practitioners come in and examine them, and... And they were like, no, nah, they were sane during the crime. Yeah. Um, and are capable of standing trial. So they go to trial. Um, and they kept, I mean, they really kind of kept um, at the mental illness defense. The, yeah. Um, they kept, like, trying to prove that um, Perry had had traumatic um, wait, yeah, I can't think of it. Oh, they're saying that Perry, yeah, 
definitely showed because of like his fits of rage and his like mm-hmm. mood swings that definitely there was something up, which probably there was. Do I think that he could have stopped himself? A hundred percent. Um yeah, and it, like these are both people who were in prison right. already. Like they've I mean, already served whole sentences. It's probably more like not that they are clinically insane, but that they're systematically just bred to be this, criminals yeah. at this point. Yeah, they just don't really know or see the option to just like go right. and get a job and be a normal dude. Yeah. Um, because you know, I feel like that's a whole thing too, like where you're if you're in the system now oh. it's like uh, you know. How do you get out of it? Yeah. Um, the other defense was that um, Dick had a like a major head injury. Yeah. Um, and they were saying that that affected his behavior. So they're saying both of them had erratic behavior, which is probably true. Yes. And as we have seen many a time, head injuries can totally lead to rage and uh, violence. Right. Um, but none of that was allowed to be presented in court, um, to the jury. I mean, it was presented. Uh, yeah, but, but they couldn't take it couldn't into, take consideration. It into consideration. I never, that's, criminal trials are so confusing to me. They are. Because there are so many things like that where they're like, here's all this stuff, but you can't use it when no. you make your final decision, but we no. have to tell you all this stuff. And it's so, it's so weird because, um, the death penalty is on the table. Yes. When I feel like you're up for the death penalty, I feel like everything. everything. I need everything. I need all the information. Yeah. No, I want your whole medical history. Mm-hmm. I want every teacher you've ever every had. Angle. I want every angle. Because I can't... Um, I'm not... Yeah, I'm not going to sit around and be like, well, they gave us eight facts, so that's enough to put this man to death on. Right? Like, no! Um, so they... The jury deliberates for only 45 minutes. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean when you also, look at it, also, also, we had a confession. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah, they felt they got is, arrested and were like, "Oh, we did it." But this is the this is the thing, and I think this. Uh, so, so at the time in Kansas, if you were convicted of murder, you um, are an automatic mandatory death penalty. Oh, interesting. So that's why I think the deliberate. So honestly, there's no. Honestly, they did it right. They did yes. it. Right? So that's not in question. Um, so the 45 minutes makes sense, but also at the same time, it's like 45 minutes uh, is a lot for some, uh, or like not that much for for the death penalty. Yeah. For me. Yeah. But, and that's mainly because I, and it's not a very popular opinion, but I'm not a fan of the death penalty. And the people always go, what if, what, what would happen if somebody killed your family member? I would fucking kill them, and then I would fucking go to jail. No, it's, you know, the <laughs> death penalty, and I today saw a Twitter thread where someone was talking about um, how all these wrongful convictions have been getting overturned because new evidence and new forensics and right. stuff are coming to light, and that in some of the cases, it's like, well, that's unfortunate because the person that we had convicted has already been put to death under yeah. the death penalty. And that's terrible. It's awful. It's awful. And to me, I feel like we need to evolve as a society um, and, like, decide what kind of society, like, we... Yeah, are what's we our that, goal society? Yeah, like, are we, are we this brutal? Are yes, we, are yes. We, whatever. The way that you as a person wake up every day and try to be your best self, we as a society should try right. to be our best self. And I think it's, like, not even. I feel like if... If it was, like, in Kansas at the time, everybody yeah. that committed murder at a certain level of murder. Yeah, certain. Not, like, self-defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, you know, or something, something but, like, like that. full-on murder. Yeah, capital murder, then you are put to death. Then that is fine. Like, I think, I mean, I'm not fine with it. No, but, but I have a little bit better It's feeling. the way that, like, when you punish a child, if they don't do their homework, they don't get to watch TV. The right. punishment, like, the punishment justifies the crime. And, like... Yes, murdering a whole family in cold blood definitely is justified in capital punishment. Right. But that doesn't mean it like, doesn't always work that way. It doesn't always work that way. Like somebody that could accident, accidentally kill somebody in armed robbery gets put to death. Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't. Yeah, that's such a complex so situation. Weird. And I also, you know, like not to play the race card and stuff like that. No, but, but it's true. I'm gonna play it and just say like it's just very uneven and un- 
unfair. It's there are so many statistics on how unfair it is and how it just disproportionately targets right. people of color and like immigrants. And it's not a deterrent, and it's not. Um, yeah, and especially it's not cheaper. Especially now, where it's like, like we we were talking about it a while ago, and we had yeah. to like look up what states still have the death penalty because nobody fucking knows. Well, and there's so many countries that don't have it anymore, yeah. right? And th- there were some of the most brutal countries, and I feel like they learned from that. Yeah. And um, I just feel like there's a lot of lessons we need to learn in America, <laughs> and I think this is one. But um, again, I if somebody did this to somebody I loved, I would want them dead. I a hundred percent agree with that, and I I probably try to kill them. Would I be right in that? No, I do not agree that I would be right in that. And would I go to jail? Probably, but I would probably vomit on the cop and then just like die <laughs> by myself. <laughs> just hyperventilate. Just, 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 just hyperventilate to death because I don't like doing anything wrong. <laughs> um, but um. Yeah, so that's, I mean, yeah. It's hard, and this is, like, because the way Truman Capote posed it was, like, this is one of the the first groundbreaking, like, just in cold blood murders that has happened. Mm, okay. Well, the way the book phrases it yeah. is, like, this is an uncommon occurrence, like, here are these people who are just out to kill. Which it's is, like, just, the 50s. <laughs> right. Which I think is like a sensationalized oh, yes. thing because we're really, when we break down the crime of it, it's these criminals who wanted a quick buck and to leave and definitely were like, obviously like willing to murder, yeah. but also wasn't the goal. The goal wasn't like let yes. me just sneak in this house and murder, and murder, these, murder people. these people. It was it was like let me find yeah. shit and then maybe and then murder. I guess I have to kill them because they've seen me. Yeah, which to me is not in cold blood. In cold blood is like I'm just gonna go to a random house and murder and whoever is there. Whoever's there. Yeah, that that to me is yes. the coldest shit ever. Yes, I understand. That. This is more like uh, I don't want to say this. <laughs> this is more like an, a typical like. A home invasion? Yeah, it's a home invasion gone wrong. wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. Yeah, there are there are so many stories of that, but it's the way Truman Capote like right. contextualizes it, contextualizes it, mm-hmm. I guess, is to try and make it this like here are two men who right. had no idea who these people were, had never met them, didn't know anything about their lives, and just murdered them. And so it's like it's a really fascinating book. It's very well written. Yeah. Um, and it's a, a pretty good movie, too. Yeah. It is very much a, a, it's a movie a of a fictionalization. It's a fictionalization, but it's also a movie of its time. So, like, yeah. just go. I, I love oh, classic I movies, but I will tell you that, like, uh, sometimes I suggest classic movies to people. I think it's like 1966, something like that. I don't know. It was definitely. It was definitely before the 70s. Yeah. Um, but I will say that it is definitely, like, that time period. Like, yeah. go into it, you know. It's, Knowing it's, that. It's a 60s black and white film. Um, and it's quite good. And, like, if you're a Walking Dead fan, you'll see um, Herschel um, from it. And also, um, oh, let me just get his name right because he's also a murderer. <laughs> <clears throat> I just want to get him really right. Robert Blake plays Perry Smith, and um, for those of you who don't know, Robert Blake is uh, besides an actor, he was the one that um, went to the Italian restaurant in um, like it's kind of like Toluca Lake area, um, took her to dinner, oh. and then dropped his gun in the um, the restaurant and was like, "Oops, my gun!" And then she got shot in the parking lot, and he says that he was like robbed or something. Yeah, that restaurant in the Warner cool. Brothers, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, that's Robert Blake. Yes. He played Perry Smith. He played the, um... I did not know he played Perry Smith, but I knew that murder story. Yeah. Whereas Dick was played by the guy that plays, uh, Herschel Scott Walking Wilson. Dead. Yeah. Um, and who recently passed away. Um, but it was a really... It's a, it's, it's a good... It's, it's entertaining. A good film. It's, it's very entertaining. It's definitely... It's one of the... I think one of the like 
are really examples of true crime yeah. in cinema. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I think that you, it's definitely, like, if you're a true crime, uh, you know, aficionado, Person, yeah. um, it's definitely something you should watch. Um, there, I did, I do have to mention that they think that the pair also killed another family. That's right. Um, but there was never charges brought against them, and as of today, it is still an unsolved crime. But um, on December 19th, so that when they would have yeah. been on fleeing or fleeing, whatever, or on the run or on the land. On the land. Whatever, which I um, now look up, because yeah. I don't understand that saying. Uh, Christine and Cliff Walker and their two children were killed in Osprey, Florida. I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Um, is again a farm. Um, and it was like the murders happened around 4 p.m. The 24 year old Christine Walker was raped, and her husband uh, then arrived home. Oh, she was raped and then shot in the head with a gun, uh, a shotgun, I think. And then her husband arrived home with their uh, three year old son and their one year old daughter, and then they were killed by gunshot. Um, um, and then, um, the little one-year-old was a, was also not only just shot, she was drowned in the bathtub. Oh, horrible. Um, so they can't, they don't really know yeah, if the baby died from the drowning, drowning or the shot. shot. Oh. Um, yeah, and in, I mean, they said it was kind of really um, eerie and sad because everything was like set up for Christmas. Mm, and, um, yeah, and then they got murdered. Right. But there's like, it it could be it could be them yeah it, it could just be another home invasion or wrong. some other guy named emmett monroe spencer confessed to the murders but they discredited it so mm, there's nobody nobody knows um there's like <laughs> this says police never identified a motive and 587 people were suspects at one time or another Jeez. and so it remains open um and yeah, I mean, they left like a lot of evidence too. They left a bloody cowboy boot, a cell phone, a cell phone, uh, <laughs> a cellophane strip from a pool, like a. Yeah, yeah, like, they were time travelers and they left a Motorola cell phone. Time travel. Doctor Who. The end of Night at the Museum, the Smithsonian. <laughs> Don't mind me. So they didn't leave the cell phone. They left a cell phone. Cellophane. <laughs> cellophane strip of like, you know, like that was a cigarette so wrapper. Oh, thing. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, from like a, a new pack of cigarettes. Right, and okay. a fingerprint on the bathtub. <laughs> and that's why I shouldn't have my things. Um, I just, that just made me think of that end credit scene at night at the museum with Smithsonian with Jay Baruchel. <laughs> Joey Motorola taking apart the cell phone that Ben Stiller left in this fucking painting that's also a portal to the past somehow. That's what all my paintings are. <laughs> um, so they're um, so they're on death row for five years and then they Ooh. are executed by hanging on April 14th, oh. 1965 and are pronounced dead. It's the worst way to die. Hanging for nearly 20 minutes. No! No. See, that's why mm -hmm. hanging is the worst, because if it doesn't happen correctly, you just slowly asphyxiate to death. I mean, I don't know if it's the worst, but they're all horrible They're all ways pretty to bad. Die, they're death sucks. All pretty bad, as far as the capital punishment yeah, ways to, to get murdered. Because <laughs> that's what it is, is just, just murdering this murderer. Yeah, like, I, you know, well, we know how I feel. Yes. <laughs> Oh, oh, and the movie In Cold Blood came out in 1967. Uh -huh. um, and it's on all your um, streaming apps. All on your streaming apps. It's just one of those ones you have to pay for, but it's like three bucks, so oh, just okay, do it. Um, I think I got mine because I still get the DVDs on Netflix. Ooh. I, uh, I, I, I still get a couple DVDs from Netflix. Honestly, <laughs> I think about doing that for so often. Because they, they just have everything so on streaming. Many. Yeah, so There's like, so many more DVDs mm -hmm. available, and there are just... And, like, it's mostly it's because all the animation I want to watch yeah. isn't available to stream anywhere. Well, and also, like, I, I'm never going to get rid of my DVDs. Like, people yeah. are like, oh, why do you still have DVDs? And I'm like, because Bonus every things. once in a while, iTunes or some other, like, yep, you know, yep, yep, yep. whatever it might be, service or whatever, whatever, it's like, 
He decided not to carry that title anymore. I paid for that bitch. That happened to me with Karen Norman. Mm. See, I have a DVD of oh, it. See, you and the 3D version. I need to get that because now it's only available to rent in Ooh. other countries. You can't oh, rent it here. <laughs> see, and also if something, say, gets banned for some reason, yeah. and I still want it, or yeah, I still want to see it, then I have it. And you it's can smart. take it away it's from me. Mm-hmm. Not that I watch a lot of banned things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's fine. I read only banned books. It's a lot easier than you think. So there are a lot of Twain. banned books. <laughs> oh, God. A lot of Mark Twain. <laughs> he was the Quentin Tarantino of his time. But for a good reason. <laughs> it's so that's one of those ones that I like was in a bookstore recently and they have like kids versions of books and I was like I wonder if this kids version of Huckleberry Finn has as many n-words as the real one I don't think so it doesn't it doesn't have any I don't know if they've taken it all out I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, he did it because it was the early 1900s yeah, he did it he did it's it because it was the what time what he did yeah so yeah. not a good reason not a great to... reason but a reason um, I looked up the on the lamb, okay. and so it is L A M, not like the animal lamb. I literally still go with a L A M B. And it emerged in the late nineteenth century as to do a lamb, which is a slang expression that popular science uh, said was simply to run. All right. Uh, and so then it got morphed through the nineteen hundreds to go on the lamb. And that's, yeah, it seems like the press took it over and started using it. And then everyone was like, oh, that's what just we'll call it when you run from the police. Just get You're say, on the way. We don't need to bring it back. It's really, we're fine. Not. We're all good. <laughs> um, so that's the murder. That's the Clutter family murder. So that's a night down. Night down for all of that. Night down for Clutter family murder. Knife down for... Knife down for Truman Capote potentially being in love with a murderer. Yeah, like, don't do that. Like, that's not a good look. Knife up for a great bestseller and a great movie. Yeah! Knife up definitely helped his career. Then he got to make Breakfast at Tiffany's, which is really racist. So then <laughs> knife down. watched it. Knife down for that. Knife down for that one. But knife up for In Cold Blood. Knife up for In Cold Blood. Knife, knife up. down for Robert Blake. Mm, yeah, knife down. Knife down. Mm -hmm. But knife up for Philip Seymour Hoffman's portrayal of Truman Capote. Yeah. It's really good. If you've never seen the movie Capote, it's, it's really good. Quite good. And it goes into him writing in cold blood. And also he was friends with the woman who wrote uh To Kill a Mockingbird, which is just a fun fact. <laughs> yeah. But was she the one that had the No. <laughs> there was a tragic story about one of the those like, like female famous authors. female writers, and I think it was actually Goodnight Moon. She yeah. has kind of a tragic story. We'll get into it one day. Because <laughs> I love getting into tragedies. <laughs> I hold on up over me like a warm blanket. <laughs> I love to like go to parties and be like, oh, do you really like, uh... What's your favorite tragedy? <laughs> you really like uh, Land Before Time? Do you know the original Ducky voice was actually killed by her father? Oh, no. goodness. Did you want to? You didn't want to know. All right. The Land Before Time already makes me cry. Just the thought of the Land Before Time. Do you know about the Exorcist curse? Oh, Let yes. Let me tell you. Just kidding. Maybe we should do a whole episode on curses. I love that. Ooh, yes. Curse the, the Omen holiday. is also like haunted oh, and cursed for shit. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a whole episode That would be a good one. A good like, holiday. Curse for the holidays. <laughs> um... Thanks for listening, you guys. Yeah, uh, thanks for liking and subscribing and yeah. giving us those nice reviews. We really appreciate them. You can find us at Pod Serial Killer on all social media. Um, follow, subscribe, rate, and send us stuff. Like send yeah. us like uh, your ideas, your thoughts, your comments. We love to share them yes. with the world. Um, I.e., you right back into your ear. Um, that sounded weird. Um, <laughs> but you get it. Um, that was my birthday murder. Uh, I'm Anastasia Washington, which I don't think we actually introduced ourselves. Oh no, I don't think we did. But now we will. We will at the very end. Um, you can find me at Anastasia W on Twitter, at Anastasia Wash on Instagram, and Anastasia TV. 
Uh, and I'm Maria Spertolozzi, and you can find me on Twitter at Maria Immortality, I think. Sure. Um, you can also follow yeah. our other podcast. Yes, One More Drink, at One More Drink Pod on the social medias. And, yeah. yeah. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.